Very good. We didn't we didn't go off too far off the end today, John. You know, like we did last time, yeah. last week. But uh, welcome to everybody. It's uh, Saturday, February the 11th here in North Texas. Uh, we've got a nice crew here uh, uh, at, around in the living room, and and another nice crew on the Zoom call. Um, and for any of, of the, those that find us via uh, the YouTube channel, we thank you for uh, uh, everybody for taking the time to, to, to come in and hang out with us for a while today. Um, why don't we go ahead and get started with our entering in prayer, and then we'll kind of walk through what we're, what we're going to talk about today and kind of segue from last week to this week and into the next several weeks. And so uh, okay, we'll do that in the name. And he's got one. Yeah, all four. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come to my will. Come to your With this one, with one to embrace my entire day. I want to embrace every thought, every word, every action, and all the people I meet. The things I have to do, all my duties, all to be in your most holy will. I want to put my whole day right from this instant in your most holy will, so that you will not be distracted or to do everything inside your head. Thank you, Father, in your will. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, and the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Remember your congregation, which you have possessed from the beginning. O Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come unto you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, who has taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us in the same spirit to be truly wise and to ever rejoice in his holy consolation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're kind of segueing from the last several weeks of conversation that we had that was on, we, we kind of titled it The Gift. And we were trying to discuss about the gift and what it was and what it, what it, what it means and how to talk about it and how to you know, enter into or or get into a conversation about it and with some level of knowledge, and um, and we we are now going to move into the uh, the, the, the thematic called knowledges. Uh, so just it's just an overarching knowledges today. Um, next week we kind of want to do knowledges dash the passion. So we're obviously going into Lent here in, I think, two weeks from now. The, the correlation between the books, the writings in the books, as uh, with the 24 Hours of the Passion, there, there's a lot of back and forth. And we've got, we've, I think, either a year or two ago, we put together kind of a cross-reference of for a particular hour of the Passion, there are writings in, in, the, in, in the book that, um, the Book of Heaven, that... Um, Kind of correlate, and so we you can kind of go back and forth. So as we go through the Easter season, we'll in Lenten season, we'll uh, we'll we'll be kind of focusing in on knowledges of of the the um, uh, of the, of the passion. But as we're kind of segueing from this thing called the gift to knowledges, uh, the last couple of weeks I've probably bored some of you with just some conversation about you know this. I was trying to work on a document that we could look at and, and talk about and you could have it you can use it you can throw it in the garbage you can do whatever you choose to do with it but i did i did get through the first pass of it um this week and everybody here has got it uh got a, a picture of it and i think john is is going to put it up on the screen for those on zoom and i wanted to just quickly walk through it I would also love to get some feedback either either as we're going or at the end or uh, via email or or some other kind of communication. 
this is obviously one man's view on this thing called the divine will and what, what it means and how it all kind of fits together uh, because we know that uh, we know that both scripture and the catechism have been directing us towards this. Um, and we know that Jesus talks about that this is the culmination. So let me walk, walk you through this document just to give you a sense of what I'm thinking and how I'm thinking about it. And again, um, um, I, I confess this is, this is kind of for me, but I'm sharing it. But I'm, I'm also, there's no pride of authorship here. So if, we're, if there's ways we can make this better, make this a great tool for, for, for everyone just to have, uh, then, then that's fine. So let me start out at the top and uh, oper operating in the divine will. I'm using the word operating because you know the purpose of this cynical is operating. It's consuming these knowledges in a way that allows us to operate in God's will rather than just live in it. And in the writings, sometimes uh, Jesus and Louisa use the word live, uh, but you have to look at what they're saying because live means operate sometimes, live means live sometimes. And we'll, we'll kind of talk through that as we, as we get to them. But as, I, as I've kind of been trying to, to, to capture all of this, I'm basically saying operating in the, in the divine will, it's the Our Father coming to fruition, right? So what, what is the first thing that we pray for, the first petition that we ask for in the Our Father? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's in the little green section, the first petition. Now, we've also talked in the past about we've prayed that prayer, we've prayed it, we've prayed it, we've prayed it, and we, we generally just talk about it and we pray it and we think about it being over there. It's going to happen sometime over there. When we allow the reality to set in that it is happening right now, and it can happen right now by virtue of what Jesus tells us through Louisa here, then there's a new meaning and, and a new understanding of everything that has been put before us in both scripture and the catechism, and also what's happening in the book. And I'm going to, I've added in here from the book of heaven on February 24, 1933, um, Jesus says to Louisa, and if it were impossible that my will could reign on earth as in heaven, my all paternal goodness would not have taught the prayer of the Our Father, because to make impossible things prayed for, I would not have done. So we know it's coming, right? Our, our, what we kind of struggle with at times is when is it coming and how is it coming? And we know that it's on the way now because by virtue of the fact that the book of heaven is available, it's being talked about. So you'll notice I've got arrows here. It's not a wheel. It's not a circular motion. It's a start and a stop the way that I've got this kind of discussed. So if we go back to the beginning, right? What, what's in the beginning? And, and, and I, I'm very repetitive about Genesis 126, but then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And then the rest of that, that verse is about dominion over uh, animals and creepy things and, and such. But we've, we've also talked a lot about, there's a difference between image and likeness and I think we all have agreed that at some point in time, we looked at those, we read, we read that, we looked at it the same, image and likeness, image and likeness, same thing. But there is a distinction between the two that we'll get, we'll get to in, in a bit. And we, we need to kind of keep in our mind always that there, there is, this is, a, this is a distinguishing and a distinction um, of, of, of what's happening and how these things are taking place. And then I also wrote here on May the 4th, 20, in 1925, that our will be known and loved and that it reign as life within the creatures. This was the purpose of creation. All right. So if the will is reigning in life um, and loved, then that causes that linking of image and likeness, which is also links back to his will being done on earth as it is in heaven, which is when the kingdom comes. As you roll forward, uh, I've titled this after the fall. So in the beginning and after the fall, there's there's five readings from the catechism here. And, and I have really scrunched them down to try to keep this page to not being so small that it's kind of hard to see. But the, the crux of what's in here, and you guys can read, you can go to the catechism and read. I'm sure everybody is in some form or fashion is either thinking about or is doing or is listening to Father Mike Schmidt on the catechism, going through the catechism in a year, which is, it's great that we are 
as a as a church and as a as a people kind of going back and re, re reviewing and reliving our the roots of what is the faith that, that we are that we are we are working from um but but in these i'm just going to kind of summarize without reading them all but in these in these 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 um, items from the catechism they it talks about the difference between image and likeness and likeness is the glory of god and and being in his likeness means mean, mean being able to be in his glory. But that is that is what we lost with the fall. We kept the image. He allowed us to keep the image. And but it's the likeness that that he had that we have lost. But in all of these, you'll see a theme in here, which is restoration. The, there's no doubt by virtue of what what the, the theologians, the magisterium that have worked its way into the magisterium, have, is that there is a restoration that is going to happen, which it has to if you go back and believe the first thing we are reading about in the first petition of the Our Father, right? He's there's a there's a restoration plan, and that restoration is is the knowledges that are contained in the Book of Heaven. At least that's what we are all studying and coming to understand and believe about. And so if you go over to the top left there, the book of heaven, of which the subtitle we know is the return of the creature to the order, the place, and the purpose for which he was created by God. Well, what was that? In our image, after our likeness, that the will is known and loved and is reigned in life in the creature so that the will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Then I've got two little readings here I've added in just to, to, to kind of help reinforce that. October 6th of 22, uh, Jesus tells Luisa the way to live, uh, that, this, that the book of heaven is the way to live in my will, the effects of it, of living in the will, the wonders and goods which the creature operating in the supreme volition receives. And then on 11, 22 and 25, he says, and if the task of the soul is to live in my will. He says live here, but he means live as an operate in his will. The task of mine is to give my likeness to the human will in a perfect way. So it all ties together as to what in the beginning happened, the fall happened, and how they're going to restore back to kingdom come, the will done on earth as it is in heaven. And then in the middle here, I've got the little purple box that the gift of operating in the divine will from the book of heaven on March the 20th of 1932, kind of summer, succinctly summarize, all we have to do is ask for it, which we know that. All we have to do is believe that the Trinity can give this. It's within their power to give it. And then we believe that the Trinity wants to give it. So if, if we ask for it, and we know that comes with constancy, and with purity of intention, that, that we want this to happen. And if then if we if we believe the Trinity can do it and they want to do it, then it can be done. That helps mold our minds to how we consume the knowledges in, in these books. And I use that word consume because that's what we're really trying to do, right? We're we're trying to we're trying to consume the knowledge into our heads, but then most importantly, from an operating standpoint, we move it from our head to our heart, which is only what a foot and a half for most of us and it's but it's the longest foot and a half that we could ever have because the will is in, our human will is interjecting itself in there all the way I, and i what i don't want to do is to oversimplify the book of heaven in itself but mm -hmm. by, but 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 i just wanted to, to to kind of portray it or convey it in this means as a the conduit for how we how we how we take what the church says is going to happen from a restoration standpoint and how Jesus tell us, tells us it will happen through these writings. And I, I, John, can you point down, or if, it's already, if they're already in there right here on the, these, these items? I, I want to just, for my, from an illustrative standpoint, to show something. So this is the Bible. One, one second. Hold on. John's trying, he's trying to, you can take that one down. All right. So here's the Bible, and this is the uh, the one that I'm using was a gift from uh, and Father Gabriel, right? It's it's the Revised Standard Version, the Second Catholic Edition. This is the Catechism, which is the Second Edition. Hmm. This is the Blue Book, which 
many of us know about. It's a, a, a compilation of a variety of writings uh, in, in, in th that, are, that are all important, but the, uh, the three appeals that Jesus and, and Mary and Louisa make to us about the Book of Heaven, along with the, the wonderful 24 Hours of the Passion description, that's in this book. And this is what Louisa wrote, or mm -hmm. that, that Jesus gave to Louisa to write. Now, in all fairness, the type here is a little compressed mm -hmm. compared to what this type is. It's not it's substantially, not but it is. Five. And it's in it's here. It's pretty close. So, it's so, so my point in saying this is when we're all here pulling our phone up and we are dialing in the dates or our iPads or whatever it happens to be that we're, that we're reading from, when we're pulling in the date, that is what we're looking through and searching through. And it, it on the one hand, if you, to see this visual, you, it can be a daunting task to say, how the, how, what the, how the, can that happen? Well, these were written over a period of 40 some odd years, 30, 30, 39, 40 years. I'm sorry, a period, a long period of time Less where Jesus was writing, what was, was, was coming to Louisa. And this is, this is even before when, when she was young and Jesus was with her. But um, we're going to have a, uh, there's a reading, if we get to it today, on, uh, on, on perseverance and patience. And so addressing these volumes and just reading and coming to meetings and, and finding other supporting materials that will help us come to understand what Jesus is telling her through here um, should, I don't, I don't want it to be daunting. I, I'm asking you not to look at it from a daunting standpoint, but also to recognize the, the, the volume of, of work and the volume of knowledge that Jesus gave Louisa um, in, in what he wanted her to write. And of course, now uh, in 95, I guess it was, was when uh, the, 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 her writings were pulled out of the vault at the Vatican and it's been converted into these, into these manuals. And now it's, thank you for the translated, I'm sorry, into these, thank you, um, into, into these books. Um, it is, uh, it's, it's available. And he tells her, he, and he can tell her many times because she asked him, why me? And why now? And he says, because this is the time. It's, it's just mm. some of the stuff you just got to say, it is just like he says, I am right. It is, it is because he says it is that that's, that's all we really can do. But I, I put this out here just, uh, a to, to to kind of wanted to walk through the the document and and again open to anybody's thoughts or comments on it and then also how how all these things hold hands and we know they hold hands and 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 it you can see it in in the the, the, the writing and the language that's in um, all of these and we have people all over the world that are doing different things. Francis Hogan is an example is she takes the writings and the Bible and just and she and it goes all the way through. Other people look at other 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 things uh, and, and come at it different ways. From some from a spiritual standpoint, some from uh, uh, from a mystical standpoint. But the the important thing is that there's a lot of stuff happening right now, and there's a lot of places to go for information here included. Um, that that is 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 helpful to help help us help us to understand what's going on in these writings. But the most important thing that we should always make sure we do is to remember there's no substitute for reading. Everything that that document, anything we're saying, anything anybody's saying is based upon their reading of the book. And that can't substitute for your reading of the books. So we have to read and then we have to take the information that we have and be able to, to, to incorporate that into, into where we are, because in the end, what, what are we doing? We're having a direct relationship with God. We are, we are going to come to his image and likeness. And there are things that happen along the way that are beautifully described in the volumes of what he says is going to, going to have, how that's going to work with us. And it's, um, uh, it, it's, it's an important mission for us. Uh, especially for those that have been here long enough and are, and are solid into it. And we know we have an important mission. So I'm going to stop there as the segue into what we're going to talk about today. Um, but if anybody's got any questions or comments or thoughts they'd like to, to, uh, uh, to throw out there, please do.
I think this is a wonderful way to, too. Yeah, to, to start the discussion this with people amazing. about it and tie in the Catholic yeah, Church, Bible. you know, yes. with the Bible, yes. the Catechism, yes. like, you know, what we hear all the time about right. this, you know, having yes. first the Bible, then the Catechism, which supports that, and, uh, you know, the Catechism always refers back to the Bible, and then the Book of Heaven, and how this is all tying together, and how there's nothing in, and of course, Cardinal Ratzinger, Pope Benedict XVI would never have released this right. if he didn't. Good no, because I mean, he he ought to, to me to be uh, named as a doctor of the church because of his understanding and theological knowledge. And, and just so, a good, good yeah, as you said that the point of reference is that I mean, that's how they got to be able to be released as Cardinal Ratzinger said. Right, right. Yeah. right. So it's all if he appointed said release this it, and then years and then he lived you know another and was pope in between but then you know it, he lived almost 30 more years and you know never once did he refute it and say oh i messed up i couldn't have released those books mm -hmm. of heaven no, you know he and right. yeah he's been reading and studying so I mean, I'm just, I think this is a wonderful piece to show to people to get the basic information and to tie together how it all flows. And it was I, I, early on, when I was early on into this, for, for some length of time, you would, someone may ask you a question or you may have an opportunity to interject into a conversation, but there are, there are so many points of entry from from the the, the 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 readings and into the divine will as to it, sometimes it's hard to say what well, right, how do I say something and so for me for this it was uh, how, how everything everybody knows the our father or the Lord's prayer whichever way you want to call it everybody knows that and and it and if you talk about it, it is it is how we come how it how it comes to fruition Mm -hmm. And it's more than just, oh, well, we go over here to the book of heaven and it says this. And as I was kind of mulling all this over, well, let, let's go back to the beginning and where, you know, what is in the beginning at the very beginning when, when, when God created, right? And so, and running it forward, it's kind of been an evolution to that. And I hope, I hope it helps. And, and I've got the word draft there. Everybody might see that because it's not done yet, but uh, never be done, but, right? but we'll great. always iterate. I will, we'll change it and put it into put a, a date on it probably next time. Well, and today, Father Mike, speaking of Father Mike and the Catechism, so all of this we have to remember that in order for this to happen, we have to go into our nothingness, right? Right, we have to become nothing, right? So today, which I thought was interesting, it was from paragraph 296, it said, talking about creation, we believe that God needs no pre existent thing or any help in order to create, nor is creation any sort of necessary emanation from the divine substance. So he creates outside of himself. Here's the sentence. God creates freely, and it's in quotes, out of nothing. Hmm. Right. Nothing is. Okay, now you can think, right. Mm -hmm. So you can think he doesn't need anything. He just creates outside of himself, right, mm -hmm. for his glory. But when we're thinking of this and what you need to do with your human will. You need to come into your nothingness. Mm -hmm. And then it says, God creates freely out of nothing. Mm -hmm. out of nothing. So yes. how when we're eyes open, ears open, we read this, this he's, you know, we're talking about creation, right? But we become a new creation. He is continuously creating every act that we do operating in the divine will. He creates freely because you've given it up. It's the only way you can. Out of yeah. nothing. Yeah. When I heard that today, I was like, out of nothing. Not like taking man out of dust. Yes, that's, that's what Something. they're, and, and he's creating creation out of nothing, outside of himself, right? Mm -hmm. But when we are living this and operating in it, God creates freely out of nothing. So you have to be in your nothingness mm -hmm. in order for this even to happen. Mm -hmm. Right, for the Lord's prayer to be fulfilled. You have to be in your nothingness. Yes. And he can create the fulfillment of the Lord's prayer out of that it's right, nothing. It's right there. Mm -hmm. But amazing. you have to get in your nothingness first mm -hmm. in order for this to. Mm -hmm. And there are, you know, terms like, terms like nothingness, 
and mission and there, there's a whole host of as as he tells her here um the way to live the way to live in my will the effects of it the wonders and goods which the creature operating in the supreme volition receive there's 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 i mean there's an innumerable number of knowledges about how all that happens and it incorporates the things such as we we just kind of speak about it and take it freely and for granted but it's it, it is it is stripping down into our nothingness mm -hmm. it is the mission our mission is we are you come to learn that that, that that those of us studying the divine will our mission is to repair redo um, regenerate those acts past, present, and future, which are not divine acts, that, that, so that God can get those acts returned back to him at the scale of which he is, which is divine. And it uh, and, and part of all of this has to be that um, as we go through and as we come to an understanding, uh, and it's because of disposition, and we all wouldn't be here if we weren't supposed to be here right now. So that's, you know, that's, that, that's kind of a given. It does, there is, there is the, con the continuity and the constancy that comes from it. But uh, it, it all becomes, we, we cross that threshold and it becomes real. It's a reality that we recognize because we can see stuff going on. And this all, this ties into what we, we talked about last week. We talked about it, we had a conference when we talked to the 12 degrees of silence. And how do you silence all those little things that are grabbing for your attention and, and trying to pull your, have, have your will be in charge versus letting God go and be in charge. So it all it all ties together in that getting to that nothingness. And I again that the, those 12 degrees of silence was uh it's a wonderful presentation by Father Bart. Yeah, this last one from the catechism, you know, I, I think some people could be put off by the fact that we think that we could be divine, share in that. It's right in the early, one of the early pieces mm -hmm. in the catechism, number 51, yeah. right at the bottom here. that says that it pleased God to reveal himself, to make known, and he's been revealing himself all the way through, but to make known the mystery of his will. This is the catechism, that men should have access to the Father through Christ, the word made flesh in the Holy Spirit and thus become sharers in the divine nature we can only do that by grace but that was the intent of the father it's in it's in the bible they the likeness to god and then it's in the catechism and probably there's a bullet down at the bottom of the catechism probably referring back to genesis for that and, yeah and surrounding all that too is the word by grace Mm -hmm. Right. This it's because he allows it and he wants it and he gives it. He provides the grace for this. This mm -hmm. is not something that you earn it. It's not something that that is uh, that you can that that that, it, that you're we so you we um, um, become God, but we are we have this we're in the divine nature by His grace. What they are by nature, we are by grace. It says that many times in the in the writings. And it's not, you know, it's, it's not to be construed as being um, uh, above or better or greater or whatnot. It's just, it is. Because the return to the order and place and the purpose for which we were created, which was Adam before the fall, it's where we were supposed to be. It's what we were meant to be. It's nothing different. It's nothing more extenuating than that. Um, and so it's, it's uh, you just... We ultimately come to the the we all come to the conclusion and the understanding that that is where we're headed. That is what we're what we're doing, and it is Him doing all the work. All we're doing is saying yes and going along for the ride. Mm -hmm. But but we do have to give up our will, which 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 He tells Louisa that is the that is the greatest gift that the Trinity can ever receive from a human is the gift of that will back because they because they know how strong it is because mm -hmm. in likeness and image. They have a strong will too, right? And so they know they know that. So when it when it is given back, it is a uh, it's a big deal to them. Yeah. yeah, getting back to Cardinal Ratzinger, of course, he's the one who 
wrote the catechism. This catechism that we're using was written the under second, Cardinal Rath, yes, under yeah. Cardinal Ratzinger. That's what, you know, when Pope John Paul II asked for it to be done, it was assigned to Cardinal Ratzinger to get it done, but he was the uh, leader of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, whatever it was. So, you know, that would make sense. So he did that. That came out prior to releasing the book of heaven. So, I mean, from a theological standpoint, I think we can be pretty confident. The, the catechism, you know, all of its resources either are from camp councils of the church or from, you know, when, yeah, the Bible. So he, that all got tied back in the catechism to the Bible. And then, and then uh, Cardinal Ratzinger released the book of heaven. So it would be good with the theological. And from, an you know, from an underlying standpoint, it's a, it, it's a, it's as I view the catechism, it is it is the 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 faith. It is a description of our faith. It is it is what the faith is in form that you can go and and it describes it. It tells it what it is. So it's the faith, mm -hmm. and the faith is clear about where mm -hmm. we're headed, mm -hmm. and and it's. And you, I mean, some people don't, you know, that want to talk about it, they give you a stiff arm, and that's all fine. But, but the, the fact that it is doesn't change the fact that it is. Uh, it's truth. Yeah. yeah, truth is true. Truth is true. And truth doesn't conflict with truth. It's the truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. And truth doesn't yeah, change. Yeah, truth doesn't change. Okay. Did they have any comments? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, anybody uh, on on Zoom have anything they might want to add? All right. Well, let's let's just. I'm going to go very quickly because I, I am I'm, as I'm going through this. I'm um, this will probably be the last week, but I do from a scripture standpoint. I'm, I'm continuing to pound in or hone in on Genesis 126, which is the uh, what what I've got on on the page there. Then God said, "Let us make man in our image, after our likeness." And then again, as it goes through the rest of that verse, it's uh, uh, about dominion over the, the the fish of the sea and the birds and the cattle, all the creeping things. But it's the dominion, the, the dominion add-on in addition to the the image and the likeness. And I've got two uh, two readings from the Catechism that I want to add into, and they are. Let me make sure I've got them right. Uh, there's actually, I'm sorry, three. Two of these two are together. The first two are 356 and 357. And this is this is in the profession of faith in the image of God. Uh, three, start with 356. Of all visible creatures, only man is able to know and love his creator. He is the only creature on earth that God has willed for its own sake. And he alone is called to share by knowledge and love in God's own life. Do I need to read that again? Did anybody hear that? It was for this end that he was created, and this is the fundamental reason for his dignity. And then there's a sub blurb here, which is from St. Catherine of Siena that they've added in here. What made you established man in so great a dignity? Certainly the incalculable love by which you have looked on your creature in yourself. You are taken with love for her, for by love, indeed, you created her. By love, you have given her a being capable of tasting your eternal good. And then 357 reads, being in the image of God, the human individual possesses the dignity of a person who is not just something, but someone. Not just something, but someone. He is capable of self-knowledge, of self-possession, and of freely giving himself and entering into communion with other persons. And he is called by grace to a covenant with his creator to offer him a response of faith and love that no other creature can give in his stead. And we know that we speak for we speak for the balance of creation that has no voice, uh, but is still operating and, and, and speaking. And then 2565, 
this is uh, the, the title of, or the heading of this is Christian prayer. And this is prayer as communion. Pray incessantly. Was that your word that you used a couple of weeks ago? Pray incessantly. In the new covenant, prayer is the living relationship of the children of God with their father, who is good beyond measure with his son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit. The grace of the kingdom is the union of the entire holy and royal trinity with the whole human spirit. The grace of the kingdom is the union of the entire holy and royal trinity with the whole human spirit. Thus, the life of prayer is the habit of being in the presence of the thrice holy God and in communion with him. This communion of life is always possible because through baptism, we have already been united with Christ. Prayer is Christian insofar as it is communion with Christ and extends throughout the church, which is his body. Its dimensions are those of Christ's love. And we know the communion that happens, the communication, I'll use that word interchangeably, that, that comes from our growth in this thing called the divine will is a it is a narrowing of that distance that gap between creature and creator to the point where we we know we, we all find ourselves just talking every day during the day you know mm -hmm. yeah okay i know what you're doing here i see that you got a you got a great sense of humor lord i I'm a humor Lord. I, I, I get that. I get this. And there's that constant steady communication that goes on about even the small little thing, because those are just as important because they're all acts as the large things. So that's the kind of the intro into our readings today, which take on the, the, the theme of the word knowledges. Um, so the, the first reading is November 28, 1922. November 28, 1922. Anybody like to read this? What volume? It is in volume 15. The very first one, volume 15. The first one in volume 15? Yes, it is. Okay, I'll read it then. Where are our leaders go? Say again? <laughs> Where are our read, leaders go? Read, we read, got quiet it, different... Are you there now? <laughs> I brought this. Nice. Oh, so you're right. right. I can. Oh, yeah. All right. You're it's fast. very old, too. All right. So. All right. And, and Jan's volume, there's a, there's a few words that are different in the writings that, that, that Jan has, so that don't let that be a distraction. It's the intent of what's being said here because it still all comes in. It comes into to, to the same same thing. So, okay. For those that are that are, that are looking at it, you know, we, there are a couple of versions that we have that are all good. November twenty eighth, nineteen twenty two. The divine will is beginning, means, and end of every virtue, and must be crown of everything and fulfillment of the glory of God on the part of the creature. I was praying, fusing all of myself in the most holy will of God, and with some doubts in my mind concerning all that my sweet Jesus keeps telling me about this most holy volition. And he clasping me to himself with a light which he cast into my mind, told me, my daughter, my will is beginning, means, and end of every virtue. Without the seed of my will, it cannot be given the name of true virtue. It is like the seed for the plant. After it has sunk into its roots into the ground, the deeper they are, the higher the tree becomes, which the seed contains. So first there is the seed. This forms the roots. The roots have the strength to make the plant sprout from under the earth. And as the roots sink into it, the branches are formed which keep growing so high as to form a beautiful crown. And this will form the glory of the tree, which unloading abundant fruits will form the profit and the glory of the one who sowed the seed. <coughs> this is the image of my church. 
The seed is my will in which she was born and raised. But in order for this tree to grow, it takes time. And in order for some trees to give fruit, it takes the length of centuries. The more precious the plant is, the longer it takes. The same for the tree of my will, which being the most precious, the most noble and divine, the highest needed time in order to grow and make its fruit known. Fruits known. So the church has, so, has known the seed and there is no sanctity without it. <clears throat> then she has known the branches, but it is always around this tree that she has been turning. So now she must know the fruits in order to nourish herself and to enjoy them. And this will be all my glory and my crown, as well as of all virtues and of the entire church. We hold on second. Mm -hmm. He tells Louisa that, and we know this, that redemption wasn't the end, but was the beginning. Mm -hmm. And as we've seen from this document, we that we know that the end is the kingdom coming and his will being done on earth as it is in heaven. So his will is being done in heaven. And what he's wanting is the will to be done on earth as it is being done in heaven. In heaven, where it's it's sanctified, there's sanctification occurs. So there's you're really pulling sanctification to this side of death. And it, he talks he talks to her about the growth towards that, which is the planting the seed and then growing the you know, the seed getting. Uh, housed in the in, in strong in the earth and we, we know how many parables of the seeds mm -hmm. has he has he has he talked about in the gospels and and then from there the tree grows but it 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 and then it grows to it it gets it matures and then it creates this canopy or its leaves or whatever whatever the kind of tree it is but it's not done until the fruit mm -hmm is displayed and becomes available and that the fruit is the the operating in the divine will as it relates to what he's talking about because that is that is the culmination of the growth of the tree and for anybody that didn't get that like, and the fruit is giving back to god right what he should have had from the beginning right you know and that's what it is it's that offering it's the, the first fruits yes the first fruits Which exactly is what you're supposed to give as yeah. you you were supposed to give your first harvest mm -hmm. your first fruits yeah. back to god yeah. so it's the same it's it giving back to god mm -hmm. all of these acts done now in the divine so those would I be think the of first the garden, fruits like in the garden, there was a lot of fruit. They were only told not to touch the one mm -hmm. tree. There's plenty yeah. of fruit. Right. And he created all of this. He created earth. So it is his. It's like being a landowner and you're letting other people, at some point you're going to say, okay, <laughs> I do own this. Mm -hmm. I need you to, you know, so he owns heaven and he's the creator of all. He created everything. Mm -hmm. But here at Jesus. some point. Mm -hmm. he he's wants going to back. take ownership but he can take centuries yeah and for g for god you know he knows day, no yeah he knows no time. a day <laughs> is like a thousand years and a thousand years it's like a day and like we were gone before and, and that's what you're talking about too and years perseverance yeah. right for us our minds want to we're on a 24-hour day schedule now i mean they used to be on a 12 but you know we're so much time related it's like okay but persevere right so and just we're living the value in of our one little act yeah. or one yes so um i think many of you are familiar with catechesis of the good shepherd it's the montessori kind mm -hmm. of version of teaching catechism to littles yeah and there's a wonderful lesson where they take one stalk of wheat and you crush it and they get to crush it themselves and there's hundreds of little <laughs> seeds that come out of the one staff yeah and just how he doubles and multiplies and 
quadruples and times in infinity. Today. Yeah. Just with one X. Yeah. Right. What he does with that mm -hmm. one. That's how it's going to be fulfilled. That I mean, love. like that's the word. No, that's it's the word that. You know, so true. You cannot no, uh, outdo him. No. <laughs> He's all love. He created out of love. You're mm -hmm. created out of love. You're and all he wants is that same love back. Now, what is your wonder if instead of manifesting the fruits of my will before, I have manifested them to you after so many centuries? If the tree had not yet formed, how could I make the fruits known? And that's what we read in those that book by Daniel Connor, several, you know, all the things that came before with the saints and their teaching throughout these centuries of these saints. You know, it's amazing what the saints have said. Yes. Now, when you look at it in hindsight, you get a better understanding of what they were really directing toward. And it was the tree growing. And right. so, you know, now we're at the point where we are. All things go this way. If someone is to be made a king, the king is not crowned before the kingdom. The army, the ministers, and the royal palace are formed. He is crowned at the very end. And if anyone wanted to crown the king without forming the kingdom, the army, etc., that would be a king for mockery. Now, my will was to be crown of everything and fulfillment of my glory on the part of the creature, because only in my will can she say, I have accomplished everything. And I, finding in her accomplished everything I want, not only do I make her know the fruits, but I nourish her and I make her reach such height as to surpass everyone. This is why I love so much and I have so much interest that the fruits, the effects, the immense goods contained in my will and the great good that the soul receives by living in it be known. If they are not known, how can they be desired? So like Mel was saying, the reading, you, if you don't do the readings to know the knowledge, how can you desire something you don't know about? Mm -hmm. Which was so true before we started mm -hmm. reading the book of heaven. It's like, I didn't know this. I kind of wondered about what, what really was going on there, but you didn't know it. Much less can anyone be nourished by them. And if I did not make known the living in my will, what it means, the values it contains, the crown would be missing to creation and to the virtues, and my work would be a work without crown. See then how necessary it is that everything I have told you about my will be manifested and known, and also the reason for which I push you so much, and how I always make you go outside the order of others. And if these, as well as the graces given to them, I make known after their death, with you instead, I allow that what I have told you about my will be known while you are still living. So, so stop mm -hmm. right there. Wow. I mean, that, mm -hmm. that, that on earth as it is in heaven, is the, the, it's not a line of demarcation, but I use that term, that everybody else is prior to this has known about the divine will and all these knowledges that it contains and what what, what God is trying to convey it, to the heavens, to those in heaven after death. But to her, it's now bringing it this side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it is not known, it will not be appreciated nor loved. Knowledge will be like manure for the tree which will make the fruit season. And once they are well matured, the creatures will nourish themselves from them. What will be my contentment and yours? What will not be my contentment? Again? What will not? Well, what will? Mine is written the opposite. Yeah. What will be my contentment and yours? Hmm. So I guess you could say it either way. She won't have or not, but yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, so it's beautiful reading about what the process, 
You know, and it's just like before the redemption, the process, the process that had to happen so that there was there was enough willingness on the earth for the apostles and everybody to be willing to listen to Jesus. And um, the same thing now, you know, he, the seed that he planted back with the apostles after his death and resurrection, uh, that's the growth of the of the tree. The roots were formed. You can kind of envision the process through this last 2,000 years. And, and as we've read about, it parallels mm -hmm. redemption. Mm -hmm. the, the, the way it's coming to pass, so to speak. Um, For some reason... Go ahead. For some reason, when I thought about nourishing themselves, um, once matured, will nourish themselves from those knowledges. I was thinking of how Louisa didn't eat. You know, she just lived on the Eucharist. That's all she needed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, good point. Oh. Yes. She was nourished. Yeah. By the from and, and, mm -hmm. and the, you know, Jesus uses and a variety of, of, of his points with her and talks to her about sacraments and how the sacraments, the purpose of the sacraments change from redemption into sanctification. Mm -hmm. Where in redemption, sacraments are medicines and aids and uh, bandages and, and helps Whereas the sacraments in the divine will convert from being the, that type of, or having that type of an effect to the word nourishment. Mm -hmm. And that they, they become nourishers of, of how we live and how we operate versus being aids and helps and medicines mm -hmm. for how we operate in redemption. And again, just with the, 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 the conversation about creation and the seed being created and then it's growing and how that is the 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 growth that growth stage is 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 kind of it's, a, it's not a fruit but it is kind of a fruit of redemption and then ultimately the fruits of sanctification each one of those fiats as they are called the fiat of creation redemption and sanctification is governed by one of the three components of the Trinity. Creation is God. I mean, God's power um, create. It's the, the strength. Jesus' uh, redemption is wisdom uh, because that's the that's where you know where we get all this these writings from. And then the Holy Spirit, as we know, is responsible for sanctification, which the Holy Spirit is what came down when Jesus ascended, right? And that, that the Holy Spirit took over from that point forward. And love. Yeah. And love. Is love. And it's all about love. It's like, that's my word. That's your word. <laughs> that is your word. Maybe today. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's go to our next reading, which is um, July 10, 1900. July 10, 1900. And that's in volume three. So that's an early one. And this is kind of a, of a living operating distinction, living for or living of or living in God. Um, again, you'll notice in the writings that uh, he uses the word live, live in the divine will, or live of the divine will, live in God or of God and for uh, and operate as well. So it's you just got to understand that it's that there's really two points. It's living resigned to God's will or living as part of God's will. And regardless, just look at the intention of the words that he's he's giving her to to understand that perspective. Uh, who would anybody like to read this? I'll read this. Okay. Difference between living for God and living in God. While I was in the same confusion, he made himself seem like a flash and made me understand that I had not written everything he had told me the day before. That is, that the soul must not only live for God, but in God. 
So blessed Jesus repeated to me the difference that exists between living for God and living in God, saying to me, in living for God, the soul can be subject to disturbances, to bitternesses, to being inconstant, to feeling the weight of passions, to meddle in earthly things. But the living in God, no, it is completely different. Because the most important thing that a person may enter to dwell inside another person is to lay down all that belongs to him. That is to strip oneself of everything, to leave one's own passions in a word, to leave everything in order, to find everything in God. Now, when the soul has not only stripped herself, but has slimmed down well, then will she be able to enter through the narrow door of my heart to live in me according to my way and from my own life. In fact, even though my heart is immense, so much so that there is no end to its boundaries, its door, however, is extremely narrow and only one who is stripped of everything can enter into it. This with reason, because since I am most holy, I would never admit anything to live in me which is foreign to my sanctity. Therefore, my daughter, try to live in me, and you will possess paradise in advance. Who can say how much I comprehended of this living in God? But then he disappeared, and I was left in my same state. Scratch, she's scratching her head a little bit like she does a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, this is early on. But there again, it's the nothingness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, tying it back to the gospel, that the narrowness mm -hmm. of the gate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or like the, the eye, eye of the needle. needle. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's easier, easier to pass than the eye of the needle. You don't leave your, if you're not no. in your nothingness. You're bringing, bringing all your human or even any little part of your human baggage along with you. Mm -hmm. You can't get through the gate. Because wasn't the gate like, then they had their camels and they had yeah. all of their stuff yeah. on the gates. side of it. Yeah. And so you yeah, couldn't. Yeah. yeah. The and so they're taught. It's interesting, right? Because he's saying you have to slim yourself down. They can't have all your, all your baggage. Your baggage. Your baggage. Get all of it off. And I know it's like. I was wondering, does that, you know, like I struggle a lot with, okay, after I die, shall I just be cremated? That's simply, you know, it's much simpler. The the old fashioned way, you know, is to go the casket route and all that. Sorry to bring this up, but <laughs> like and as, as something I think about in my life. And when he says to give up everything and, you know, don't think about it or don't just give it up. I mean, sometimes it's hard for me to, to, to just give up stuff. And it, it kind of just seems like in that verse where he told that one rich man, you know, you can't enter the kingdom of God with all your riches. And sometimes I think of all the nuns and, and priests who have given up everything that they, their money, their, you know, and they just do God's work. And it's like, it's kind of like it's that's what he wants us to do but it's sometimes hard for me to separate what I think I have to do in my life versus doing what God wants me to do so let's talk about that just a little bit more and think about it in the context of attachments attachments and detachments the, the passions, the humors, he uses the word humors, H-U-M-A doesn't mean humorous, but humors, uh, passions of baggage that we just talked about. The question becomes, and, and what comes from this way of living ultimately is you, you dismiss your attachment to those, to those bags, to those passions. And it doesn't mean that, you know, we stop doing things and we sit in our house and that's all there is to it. We all have our vocations that we, we've got, that we're working on, that we do, what we go out and do every day. But we're, we're, we, we are able, in our mind, we are, we are not of the, we're not of the 
the the thought process of the the old catchphrase from uh, years ago that John likes to to talk about. What would Jesus do? Because if we're sitting there thinking about what would Jesus do, that means we're trying to make we're trying to put our own human spin on it. And it does, I mean, it's you you don't do this automatically. It, it it comes through your our own transformation in this thing called the divine will. But what he ultimately allows you to know is you you go and you do, you go and you do, and it doesn't really matter what the 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 outcome is you're not attached to it if it's a great outcome so be it you know if he if he wants to provide for us in a in in a in a fine way then that's that's the outcome if it's not a good outcome it's the same way as there's not an attachment to the outcome it's more living through and being and having him be part of the 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 exercise of, of our lives so it's a, it, it, we ultimately will get to, to that, that, that way of life and that, that outlook on life. Um, sometimes that can be misconstrued as not caring, or it could be misconstrued as uh, 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 fate or whatnot. That's, and that's the farthest thing that it is from it. But it is a recognition that when we strip down to our nothingness, as he just talked about, so that God can take over, then whatever we do is what God wants to do. If we're if we're going to walk out to the to the the backyard, if we're cutting the grass, whatever we're doing, that's what God wants to do right now. We just we just go on with it, and it, and that therein is where this this essence of peace comes into how we live and and how things don't rattle you. And if you remember at the beginning there, he says. Let me go back to it. Um, it's our checklist. <laughs> um, uh, in living for God, the soul can be subject to disturbances, to bitterness, to being inconstant, to feeling the weight of passions, to meddle in earthly things. That's all of us trying to interject our will into an outcome. Mm -hmm. And, oh, you know, uh, well, my my person I voted for didn't get in or the, the the my my uh, Cincinnati Bengals aren't playing in the Super Bowl, and I get angry. I get angry about it. Well, that, that's me. That's all about me and what I want. And we ultimately find ourselves that we are we enjoy the game for the game, but the outcome doesn't matter. And God enjoys the game for the game, John, because in the end, what does God want us? He wants to live. He wanted to live in us, in His image and likeness, which means, he, as He said at the very end there. Uh, I would never admit anything to live into me, which is extraneous to my sanctity. So he wanted to live in us, experience our acts that he has put out there that he created for each and every one of us, our acts, which is our lives, the, that, that order of things that, that go on that, that move us and or our life. He wants to experience that. And, um, and, and, and that's the, he, he does it just through the experience, but it's not necessarily an, an attachment to the outcome. You know, we know people that have talked about, uh, uh, you know, Dale used to talk about, she was religiously turned on EWTN at three o'clock, no matter where she was, she had to find the TV and turn it on. And, and all of a sudden it came, but why it wasn't so much because well, that's who she was. That's what she had to do. And then she ultimately came, he removed that from her. And then she ultimately came to the understanding that she was watching that three o'clock show. I forget what it was. The Divine, Divine Mercy Chapel was, uh, was because that's what she wanted to do rather than God mm -hmm. wanting to do it. And there, and it's, it's, I'm not saying that's an easy thing to figure out because it's not, we, it's a, it's a transformation that comes ultimately through the consuming of these knowledges and the incorporating them into what we do. You wanted to add something? No, I think we had comment. comment. Okay. Yeah, I wanted um, to also comment or ask a question on that same um, part of the reading that you read, Mel, about the subject to disturbances, bitternesses, and being inconstant, feeling the weight of passions. Because um, if we consider that as living for God as opposed to living in God, I think even... And if I'm wrong, let me know. I think even when we are living in God, we still aren't completely to our nothingness because I think it takes a while to get there. 
So I'm thinking if you want to say stage one, two or whatever of the divine will, I mean, in my experience, I, I still feel disturbances or um, the weight of passions or whatever, being in constant, whatever, because I'm still on that journey of complete nothingness, but I would like to feel that I'm still living in God. Father Brown, so, you, Father Brown, you say, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no. So I just wanted to, to add that, that even on your journey of nothingness, you might still have these feelings while you're living in God. But I, I don't know. Yes. And Louisa did that too. And Father Brown used to describe it, and maybe this is this would be helpful, is the gift of operating, living and operating in the divine will. Um, uh, there is a, there is a, I think it was last week or two weeks ago in the reading we read, there is an agreement between you and Jesus that that's what you want to do. You're, I mean, we're, we all, we all went to several meetings and we, we went to more meetings and more meetings and we listened and we learned. And the first meeting, we weren't living up God. We were, we were learning about it. And at some, but at some point in time, we all said, this is what I want to do. And I, that's my intention. And I have the faith that everything you say in this book is what's going on and what's happening. And that faith comes from a variety of other of sources, if you will, in some people. But it is, it is what I want to do. Father Brown says, Jesus gives you the gift, but he still holds on to it because he wants to make sure you're going to get down to that stage. And at the point in time that he is comfortable, that the decision is made, that it's mutual, uh, and, and that you are, as you described, beyond the, the, the state of feeling those disturb, disturbances, that's when he lets go. This is me talking about that timeline there, but that's when he lets go. But what he also says, and I have to find the reading, but what he also says is, as you're going along the way, you're going to be impacted by the things of the world. And the key is, so long as you're not, you don't respond to these things because of your will, then he will he will he works around you and behind you to those acts and to give them back to you to us to me as as uh, as if they had been done properly and with regard to him in the first place. So long as because the key word is there and not of will. So 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 we're going to experience the kinds of things that you that you describe because we are still. We are, we may be of God, but we are also in the world and, and, and we're being bombarded by things all of the time. But our key thing is to be, our intention is pure that this is what we want to do and how we want to operate. And we have faith that Jesus is doing the things that we can't see behind us, around us, in front of us, that he says he's doing if we are of that intent. And he takes, that's part of him taking care of the rest he says he says many times i mean i know many many times in those all yeah. that that foot and a half there just be attentive and let me do let me do go ahead father you had a comment or question father can you hear me yes you yes can. welcome yes father amen Good um, sharing, very good work that you are leading. Um, uh, yeah, just thank for being able to join. One of the things that uh, came to that, particularly speaking about the uh, work that you are in a body, one of a body. But anyway, I, I want to do that. Father, I'm sorry, we're having a hard time hearing you. Can, yeah, can you get closer to your microphone? All right. You there, Father? Is that better? Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. It's a little better, yes. Can you hear me? Is it better where I'm moving? Sorry, we're all leaning in because we want to make sure <laughs> we hear you good. If I speak, are you able to hear me now? Is it possible? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, just one of you. Things 
that I think you answered the question well. Um, little for rain. It's somewhere written, not that I have read much at all, but it's somewhere written that the answer there is perseverance. We have to keep at it as far as my understanding, experience, that the more we keep at it and persevere every day, the meaning we get the goal of living in this world. That's that's the way I understand it, and it's a process in the journey. I think you've answered it fairly well. And do not be discouraged. Keep going. Keep at it and keep asking the Lord to deliver us more and more. It's very deep, and it's something that's um, definitely the kingdom is saying. Think about the nation. It's my fault. How do you distract it from the body? You bury the body in the temple, and one day it will be resurrected. And also, when you bury the body, you have a tomb. So it's safe to go to the grave or not. So, just a few things like that. It's very popular now because people don't have money sometimes. And originally, it was just an exception for so certain climates and things. But Often, what becomes the exception has become very common. So, that is my thought fairly outside of the present, where they found the body, and I think it's a terrible experience. So, thank you very much for your good thought. For example, continue on with this. I hope I'll try and join you whenever I can. So, thank you. That we, we appreciate you joining us. I, I what I um, will make sure that I heard most of what you had said, which I think is uh, so true, which is the the continuous, the continuous of of, of, of moving forward and perseverance, and and and, and let him do. Um, is is I mean that is there's so much in, so important. Because it's it, he talks about the word constancy, and it, it, it's not a I'm doing it. I'm gonna I want to do it today, and then I'm gonna do it tomorrow, and then I'm, I'm take, take right a few on. days off. I mean, this this is a, a way it, it is a way of life, and and it comes with a constant intention for it to be. And then when we encounter things, we we say thank you, and we and we uh, and we and we continue to move on. Because it's it, it's all about it's all about the learning and then and then the operating in this. I hope that's I, I hope that I I kind of restated uh, what where where you were you were breaking up a little bit there towards the end. But um, thank you for 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 the, the comments. And it basically comes down to your desire, right? That's your intention as you desire it. And we live in this terrestrial world of this spiritual battle between God and Satan. And, and so there are going to be things that pop up in your world. And you just have to say, fiat, like, I, I don't want to do anything about this. You take care of it. And if you desire it, I mean, in the readings, he talks about all these walls of light go up. All the angels and saints, Mother Mary, Jesus, everyone is there protecting you. They want this so badly that we've got to just forget about ourselves and realize that yeah there's gonna be things that pop up and in those moments you just say Jesus take care of it like I I, I cannot I can't do this and that's okay and when you let go and just let God be God you'll be amazed about what he can do and don't I think part of Pride is thinking, oh, well, I have this disturbance and I have this. Well, okay, yeah, you, you will, yeah. you will. Here, we're not in the beatific vision of Jesus living in heaven. We are going to have those moments. But it's in those moments where you say, send that to the lake of fire. I want nothing to do with that. Fiat, your will be done. I am detached from the outcome. And when you detach from it and you don't care, and it can be the worst thing that you can ever imagine in your life, just let him do. And he'll take care of it. 
I guess I guess I'm looking uh, for I don't know if it's for a feeling or a maturity of handling things differently than before I knew as a child of light. Like I, I still, you know, the feelings still come and you have to try, like you said, to let, let him do. But I wish I didn't react and have the same feelings as I did prior to knowing I was a child of light. It's still such a, a struggle to live in completely up in the faith and not down on the earth. <laughs> in, I think that's just a matter of time. Watching, you know? Mm -hmm. you know? That, the perseverance. Yeah, I think, Nadira, that'll, I think that will change. You'll see that slowly fade away. You'll see the point where things that would drive you crazy before. I don't, it's just kind of like, okay, well. I'll take and, the graces instead. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it just is. So let's maybe take that just a little bit more and talk about it in terms of operating. I mean, it's one thing to read what Jesus says and right. how, how, uh, he describes it and how he, you know, in many of these, these writings, he describes what it looks like um, and what, uh, and, and in other ways, ways to get there. But the actual act of it, Nadir, just as an example, things pop into your head or, or, or someone cuts you off. You know, the easiest example, you're driving down the road and somebody cuts you off, right? Uh, the, 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 the first thing that I, that I learned in listening to my early participation here is you just say fiat and you don't you you don't try to speed up to get around the person to hold them back you just say fiat and you there's a recognition in that that um a that person is doing their will and they are they're trying to beat you or b they may have some kind of emergency they're trying to get with and we don't you don't know but it's a matter of fiat, and, and you just say fiat, and, and thy will be done. Fiat, thy will be done is, is what we're saying there. And thank you. And, and in some instances, it's thank you. Exactly right. It's thank you for letting thank you. thank you for letting me. It's always thank there. you for this. Thank, thank you for that. That was not in some instances. It's always. Yeah. It's um, but it, but it's also it's you also um, you, you, you you may you may hear something. We talked. John mentioned the twelve. Uh, degrees <clears throat> excuse me the 12 degrees of silence um that that was used as part of an operating tool i'll say that that father bart talked about in the retreat and and how do you silence things that are coming at you for me a lot of times i have to physically say to myself stop it stop stop thinking that stop letting that come in stop mm -hmm. reacting and it's a, it is a, it is an internal, internal, an internal physical reaction of just stop. And to me, that's helpful. That may not be helpful to others, but, no. but as a way of trying to combat that. And then over time, you find that stop works pretty fast. John takes yeah. his, his arm like around the band, band and pops it. That, that may be. Um, um, a way for you to kind of to, to between the fiat and between the stop, it it slowly parses out mm -hmm. different things, and you find yourself as you go down this road daily uh, or minute, second minute hourly. It's it, you're always intention is to always be going down this road. You find yourself that when you do look back, you'll say. You know, I did. I would have reacted differently um, to that situation before understanding what we're trying to accomplish here, what I, what God's trying to accomplish through us, I should say, mm -hmm. with uh, with 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 these knowledges than 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 how I why, how I actually reacted. And I think exercising that muscle mm -hmm. over time, and like I got the word "thank you" from you, and it, I find myself still. Times when I say thank you, I'm being sarcastic with God, <laughs> but that wears on us, and then it becomes more sincere over time. And just saying thank you right away, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and how counter countercultural that is. Yes, exactly. for everything, for everything, even in suffering. Yes, say, that's what I refer thank to. You the for the suffering. Yes, my car just broke down. Thank you. A little sarcasm. But actually, thank you. No, that's how you thank share you. in him. 
This, that's what he did. He suffered. He took on all of our sins to redeem us. And we get to sometimes in just small ways share in that divine suffering. Right. And instead of saying, oh, say thank you. And I that know. right there will bring you a peace that surpasses all understanding. Because all he needs is for you just that little bit of acknowledgement mm -hmm. of what he's the gift that he's giving you in that moment. And you acknowledge that suffering. You say, thank you for it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all done. It is taken care of. And you will find a joy and a peace that you have never understood. And a small suffering and a very big suffering. It's amazing. I think, I, I guess patience is key also. I guess I'm impatient with myself to some degree that I want to know now. I want to have this decision made now where it took God centuries upon centuries, you know, to, to grow this tree, plant <clears throat> the seed and let this church grow. And here I am trying to make myself think I need to be living in God right now. Why am I not living in God right now? You know, so I think my, my problem I can see is that I'm a little impatient with myself. But I appreciate everyone's feedback. It's really helpful. And I think to you also add on to what you're saying, Michelle, not only not only are we participating in his suffering, but we also have this opportunity to lift the weight of that cross on him. Yeah. I mean, because we form the cross, right? That's right. And to think, because Louisa did it all the time, especially mm -hmm. in the 24 hours of the mm -hmm. please let me suffer so I could release that weight and what we get to do exactly and what we get to do in in the acts right and so what maybe wasn't done by someone in the similar exactly. circumstance exactly of saying thank you for this suffering and I place my I love you or that extra mm, on that this got, suffering we can now right. pull it out so yeah. we mm -hmm. take that to we repair we redo we substitute for acts that weren't done that's exactly correctly on his level and in suffering as you're living in the divine will, that's, that's just huge. We take it mm -hmm. on, yeah, with you, Jesus. Right, so, so much glory and love and honor and praise and everything goes into that suffering on that divine level. It's incredible. And what missed opportunities we all mm -hmm. miss mm -hmm. in our suffering. Sure. And also, Nadir, everything is covered in your entering in prayer. That's right. Yeah, I was going to say that, um, you know, when you first start reading the readings, the writings, you know, and your journey, journeying into it and the knowledges that you gain, you know, it's beautiful. But then your personal journey into this, it does become more difficult because we're, we're going towards nothingness. And I guess I feel like until I reach my nothingness, that's when these things won't bother me anymore. You know, because that's the point, like you, you suffer to the point of saying yes, 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 yes. So there is nothing else left that would affect you. So you're in your nothingness then, but it's that journey because it's a parallel, your, your journey and your reading, you know, and the reading is the fruit. It's giving you all the food and the encouragement and the knowledge of what's going on behind the scenes. But then there's the journey, the personal journey of getting down to your nothingness that is the difficult part so just it, just to say and it is it is difficult because what you are describing in your personal journey is the act of changing so that you can operate in a way that you are trying to operate in and your will doesn't really want that to happen because you're now allowing God to take over, you're desiring and wanting God to take over that decision making of whether you're going to, how you're going to react, and what you're going to react to. And he, and 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 as we go through these writings, you know, we, we we're fond of saying uh, uh, that this is not a devotion. You know, this is this is not something that we come in and we we read and then we'll see you next week and we'll pick up where we left off. This is this is a uh, this is a way of operating and he puts things in front of us that 
are in the end, as I see them, in the end are geared towards helping us get to our nothingness, helping us, and, and by that, by getting ourselves out of, of, of how we're reacting to all these things that are coming at us. But they are, there, are, there are points along the way where all of a sudden we're at the top of a hill. We got to decide whether we're going to go on the other side. And, and, and it, uh, that's, that's part of that transformation that happens uh, in us as, as we start losing these passions and these start stripping these, and the stripping and starting yeah. and it's, it's the stripping process. <laughs> strip you down. Yeah. And it's all out of love. So, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's all love. It's, God loves us. There's, he does nothing but love us. There is no. And we have to choose yeah. which way we see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that and, was, mm -hmm. and that was last, I mean, last week we, we did the uh, September 5th, 1938, where even then that was volume 38. Louisa is still saying she's getting distracted. She, she mm -hmm. can't do it. And Jesus, that's when he says, just, basically let me do keep your will with mine and let me do and, and that so the fact that we're going to have little time periods of you know Glasses. doubt or, or concern or, or whatever it's weighing on you that I'm not quite doing it the way doing what I should be doing or whatever Louisa had that I mean Louisa sitting there with Jesus right. and she's feeling that way 1938 so we can't you can't feel bad about that you just know that's the, just, the process to what, what father says it, it's just you still yeah. you keep you keep charging on and you recognize that um it's it it's a it's about your intention and the constancy of wanting to operate this way no matter what comes in front of you you take it as it comes and and, and you fiat it out or you or like i said you tell it to stop you tell it to like go over there or what, whatever is good, you know, whatever good tool that you can use to, 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 to use, use your term muscle memory to you muscle it out of there. Sometimes that you just got to muscle it out. Okay. Shall we go to our next one? May 30th, 1925. May 30th, 1925. <clears throat> what volume? Oh, I'm sorry. 17. Uh, 17. Well, I'll go ahead and read this then. May 30th, 1925. How one who does the divine will is placed in the same conditions as the very blessed or blessed. The knowledges of it are like many doors of light, of grace, of divine communications, which are open. I was feeling oppressed because of the loss of my adorable Jesus. Oh, how I long for his return. I called him with my heart, with my voice, with my thoughts which his privation rendered awake and active. Oh God, how long are the nights without Jesus while with him they pass as one single breath? And I was saying, my Lord, come, do not leave me. I am too little, I need you. And you know that my littleness cannot be without you. Yet you leave me, ah, uh, come back, come back, oh Jesus. At that moment, he extended one arm around my neck, and he made himself seen as a child, pressing his head very strongly against the interior of my breast and knocking with his head against my breast to the extent that I felt it break down. So much so, and I trembled and feared. And Jesus, that I trembled and feared. And Jesus, with strong and sonorous voice, told me, my daughter, do not fear. It's me, I do not leave you. And how could I leave you? Living in my will renders the soul inseparable from me. My life is for her more than the soul to the body. And just as the body without the soul turns into dust because it lacks the life to sustain it, in the same way, without my life within you, 
you would remain empty of all the acts of my will in you. You would no longer hear my voice in the depth of your soul, which repeats and suggests to you how to fulfill the office of my will. If there is my voice, there is also my life that emits it. How easily you think that I may leave you. I cannot do it. First, you would have to leave my will, and then you could think that I have left you. But also for you, it would be difficult to leave my will, not to say almost impossible. You are in a condition which is almost similar to the conditions of the blessed in heaven. They have not lost their free will. This is a gift which I gave man, and whatever I give once, I never take back. Slavery has never entered heaven. There's a reading we're going to read. It won't be today, but it's the, it's the last catch reading that every, everybody that goes into heaven makes, make, accepts that act and makes that decision. I am the God of sons, not slaves. I am the king who makes everyone reign. There is no separation between me and them. But in heaven, the knowledge of my goods, of my will, and of my happiness is so great and so vast that they are filled to the brim, to the point of overflowing. And so their will finds no place to act. And while they are free, the knowledge of an infinite will and of the infinite goods in which they are immersed leads them with an irresistible force to use their will as if they did not have it, considering this as their highest fortune and happiness, but still in spontaneous freedom and of their own will. The same for you, my daughter. Making my will known to you has been the greatest grace I have given you. And while you are free to do your will or not, before mine, your will feels... <coughs> Excuse me for that. Wow. <laughs> And while you are free to do your will or not, before mine, your will feels incapable of working. It feels annihilated. Knowing the great good of my will, you abhor yours. And without anyone forcing you, you love to do my will in view of the great good which comes to you. And the many knowledges of my will, which I have manifested to you, are divine bonds, eternal chains that surround you possessions of celestial goods. And if you wanted to escape these eternal chains, to break these divine bonds, to lose these celestial possessions also in this life, your will, though free, would not find its way out. It becomes confused. It sees its littleness and fearing itself or a trick of its own, it dives and plunges itself into my will with more spontaneous love. Knowledge opens the doors to the good which is known. And the more knowledge is I manifested to you about my will, the more different doors of good, of life, of grace, and of divine participation I opened for you. These doors are opened for you. And as these knowledges reach the midst of creatures, the doors will be opened for them because knowledge makes love arise for the good which is known. The great door which I will open will be my will, so that they may close the little door of their will. My will will make them abhor their own, because in the face of my will, the human is incapable of acting. With the light of my will, the creature can see how insignificant and good at nothing her own is. Therefore, as a consequence, the creatures who will penetrate into these divine knowledges according to the efforts they will make in order to reach them will keep their own will aside. Moreover, you must know that when I manifest to you one knowledge about my will, only then do I decide to open another door of my knowledge when you have let all the good of what I have manifested to you enter into your soul. 
If I did not do so, yours would only be the news of that good, but not the possession of it. And I cannot do this. Whenever I speak, I want the good which I manifest to be possessed. Therefore, be attentive in the practice of my will, that I may open to you more doors of my knowledges, and that you may enter more into the divine possessions. Yeah. She knows that he's inside of her, but when he when he doesn't manifest himself, she she gets all she gets all woody and scoochy, doesn't she? She does that all the way through the writing. And why not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, exactly. if you had that kind of interaction, why right. you would you you completely understand? It's intolerable, yeah. anything less. <laughs> well, and I think Nadira, I mean, this kind of points to what you were saying. I think that's part of the journey is we become uh more uh alert to some of our passions or things that we wouldn't have necessarily even thought of before. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that means that you're in and out and in and out. You're not. I mean, that we know that like when you give your fiat, you desire it. He does it. It's done. It's done. And you have to believe in that. And then um, uh, what's the word that I use? Um, entrust yourself to it. Okay. But this is where it's saying you start seeing all those little things because you are purging your soul this side of death. So when you're seeing those things, it doesn't mean, oh gosh, I think I'm out of it. No, I'm at, mm -hmm. no you're in, but he's allowing you to purge your soul and to see those little passions or vices or something where you can go, oh, mm, I didn't acknowledge that before. I'm going to acknowledge that. And if you need to go to confession, you go to confession. That's, that's the sacraments. Those are the graces. That, that's the fruit of redemption, right? I mean, that's what was given to us for sanctification, the church. So I think that's those little things where you like see your littleness, right? You're like, oh my gosh, I'm so not worthy. Well, you are. I mean, you're a, a daughter of God, right? And so just with one word, he can, he can purify everything with your fiat, his fiat. It's done. Right. So, and Francis Hogan gives that great analogy. If you're driving in the storm and there's mud on your windshield and you put on the windshield wipers and you can see, but then when the sun comes out and the mm -hmm. clouds are gone, then you can see all of the little smudges still on your windshield. And then that becomes intolerable. Right. And that's what this is saying. Right. Mm -hmm. so it's all those little yes, and you take care of it clean it off yeah. yeah right become clean so you really i mean there if you desire it he'll do it mm -hmm. yeah unless you make a conscious decision mm -hmm. right to leave right and you can you can yes and some may right uh but unless you're doing that if you're still progressing with the knowledges and working with your muscles to you know become more and more and your attention is pure yes mm -hmm. and you desire it you're fine mm -hmm. thank you guys i think we have time for one more this next one is a short er one um so why don't we wrap up today's cynical with this one and it is um volume two from the early on volume two it's september 20 5th, 18, 26, 26, I'm sorry, 18, September 26th, my little thing squiggly went wrong, 1899. It's volume two. Volume two, September 26, 1899. I can read. I'm sorry, go ahead. I can read. September 26, 1899. Oppositions to writing. How the Most Holy Virgin is a portent of grace. Abstractive, in, abstractive sight and intuitive sight. This morning, as my adorable Jesus came, he carried me outside of myself. 
But to my greatest sorrow, I saw him from behind. And as much as I prayed him to let me see his most holy face, it was impossible. In my interior, I kept saying, who knows whether it is because of my oppositions against the obedience to write that he does not deign to show me his adorable face. And while saying this, I cried. After he let me cry, he turned around and told me, I take your oppositions into no account because your will is so identified with mine that you cannot want but what I myself want. So though it is repugnant for you, at the same time, you feel drawn to do it as by a magnet. Therefore, your repugnances serve for nothing else but to render the virtue of obedience more embellished and bright. This is why I ignore them. Mm. Afterwards, I looked at his most beautiful face and in my interior, I felt an indescribable contentment. Turning to him, I said, my most sweet love, if I take so much delight in looking at you, what must it have been for our queen mama when you enclosed yourself in her most pure womb? What contentments, how many graces did you not give her? And he, my daughter, the delights and the graces that I poured into her were such and so many that it is enough to tell you that what I am by nature our mother became by grace, more so since she had no sin and therefore my grace was able to lord freely within her. There is nothing of my being which I did not give to her. In that instant, I seemed to see our queen mama as if she were another God, with this difference alone, that in God, this is his own nature, while in Mary most holy, it is acquired grace. Who can say how stupefied I was left, how my mind was lost in seeing a portent of grace so prodigious. So turning to him, I said, my dear good, our mother had so much good because you let yourself be seen intuitively. I would like to know, how do you show yourself to me by abstractive or by intuitive sight? Who knows whether it is- Yes. Uh, that was that I, I find that abstractive, intuitive, an interesting choice of words, and even in the translation mm -hmm. for her. I mean, those mm -hmm. are pretty those are, those are pretty strong words, are words for her. Yes. Yeah, college <laughs> words for a, a lady with a first first uh, grade education. Yeah. But that I don't know whether that struck anybody else that no, same yeah. way, but it was an interesting um an interesting way, but and but but it, it plays right into how what what he wants to tell her. He's doing the writing anyway, so he just, he decided to up the game a little bit, I think, there. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Uh, who knows whether it is even abstractive or by intuitive sight? Who knows whether, sorry, who knows whether it is even abstractive at all? And he, I want to make you understand the difference that passes between one and the other. In the abstractive, the soul contemplates God, while in the intuitive, she enters into him and obtains graces. That is, she receives within her the participation in the divine being. How many times have you not participated in my being? That suffering, which seems almost natural in you, that purity by which you reach the point of feeling as if you did not have a body, and many other things, have I not communicated this to you when I have drawn you to myself intuitively? Our oh Lord, it is so true. And I, what thanks have I rendered for you for all this? What has been my correspondence? I feel blushing at the mere thought of it, but oh, oh, please forgive me and let it be known in heaven and on earth that I am an object of your infinite mercies. Yeah. I feel this speaks to what you said earlier, Mel, about this is not a devotion. It, I mean, it could, I'll, I'll say it this way. It could be a great devotion. You read these words and you feel compelled. 
I mean, they are they are strong <laughs> word, but it's not a devotion. It's meant to be taken and consumed. I, I, I you guys are probably tired of using that word consumed, but it, it, it is these knowledges are meant to be consumed by and, and moved from your head to your heart. Because when they're in but your heart, you're operating from them. I think too, like if you read these these writings, there's no way that it would just it would stop at being a devotion. There's right. no way he's speaking to your soul. You mm -hmm. would go deeper. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's 36 volumes by the time you get to the, I don't know, the fifth or sixth, or definitely by the 11th. <coughs> yeah. 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 yeah, I agree. Let's let's do uh, uh, this this last one, which is uh, in 1938, is is longer one. But the very very last one we have on our list, let's uh, it's a shorter one. So let's do it, and we'll we'll wrap up one more, and that is in volume four, January 31, 1901, January 31, 1901. This is actually similar to a uh, yeah. Oh yeah, this is a good one. And it's and it's short, but it's uh, but it talks about. Who would like to read this? I can read, read it now. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right, okay. guys. Okay. Okay, John writes up to 1901. Jesus explains the greatness of the virtue of patience. As I was in my usual state, my sweet Jesus was not coming. Then after much waiting, I saw him for just a little. And he told me, my daughter, patience is superior to purity because without patience, the soul easily unbridles. It is difficult for her to remain pure. And when a virtue needs another virtue in order to have life, the second one is called superior to the first. Even more, it can be said that patience is custody of purity. Not only this, but it is a staircase to ascend to the mountain of fortitude in such a way that if one went up without the staircase of patience, he would immediately fall from the highest point to the lowest. In addition to this, patience is seat of perseverance, and this seat produces branches called firmness. Oh, how firm and stable and the good she has started is the patient soul. She pays no attention either to rain or to frost or to ice or to fire, but all her attention is on bringing to completion the good she has started. In fact, there is no greater foolishness and that of one who today does some good because he likes it, and tomorrow he neglects it because he finds it no more pleasure in it. What would one say of an eye which at one hour possesses sight and at another is blind, or of a tongue which now speaks and is now mute? Ah, yes, my daughter, patience alone is the secret key to open the treasures of virtues. Without the secret of this key, the other virtues do not come out to give life to the soul and to ennoble her. Good one, though. Yeah. 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 
perfect to wrap up because yeah. that's what I was thinking. So patience, Nadira. Uh, <laughs> patience, yeah. everybody. 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 Yeah. And perseverance combined. Yes. Okay. Well, it's the secret key that opens all the night is a virtue. So love that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and uh, wrap it up. Anybody, uh, unless anybody would like to, to comment on uh, or anything that comes to their mind. If you just explain the books on the table, I, I wasn't sure at the beginning. I missed the piece at the beginning, all the books, the volumes you have on the table. Oh, they yeah, explain yeah. that. And yeah. please. Right. We were talking about uh, we the, the, the document that we put together on, on uh, oh yeah, on the uh, <clears throat> the movement of Chron with the Bible and the and the catechism, and we I started out by putting putting them down where this is this is you know this is the Bible, this is the catechism, the second uh, uh, the second edition, this is the blue book that has it has come to know, which contains the variety of writings of uh, of Louisa, in particular the three appeals and the twenty four hours of the passion, and then these are the volumes that that Jesus gave to Louisa. Um, admitting that the, the type in the Bible is smaller than the type in the volume, but when it comes to what's contained, that the knowledge is in the, and what Louisa, Louisa received from Jesus to, to give on to us uh, in these volumes is uh, significant. And it, it's, it's a, uh, for, for what we're all, what we all look at on our phone, and we're going to different readings and whatnot. That that's that is what's on the phone, and it's uh, it, 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 we we can't be intimidated by it. We need to have patience in how we work our way through this because there's a lot of knowledge that Jesus has to give to us, and and every one of them is is important and obviously builds on the knowledge that came before it. You know, it's funny is we talk about the fact we can share. We get it on our phones, and that's the way most people grab it. Very few people have all the volumes. And if you walked into somebody right now and said, here's what we're studying, drop those volumes on the table, they would probably say, no thanks, mm -hmm. because it's too, too, it's too much. I mean, like you just said, comparatively speaking, it's, it's huge. And you just think people looking at that and saying, well, this is what I'm getting into. I, no, I don't think so. I mean, just something like that. The little things that contribute to uh, Help, an openness of wellness. On. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I, I know that wasn't the reason for that being out there, but your reason is is really, you know, look at the amount of knowledge that was given here, uh, you know, about the era of sanctification. Yeah. So, so that's where that's where all that came from. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Well, why don't we go ahead and uh, call down the kingdom, and then we'll wrap today's circle up. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, descend, O Supreme Will, come to reign upon the earth. Descend, O Supreme Will, come to reign upon the earth. Descend, O Supreme Will, come to reign upon the earth. Our Father, who art in heaven, and will be in thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are the women of the womb. Blessed is the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
May the will of the Father, may the note of the Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thanks again, everybody, for being with us. I think Mary should be with us. Back. We should be back next week. Um, Are you? And uh, yeah, we will. We'll, we'll be here for, for most of most of the meetings. But uh, again, really appreciate having you on the on the call and and all the the conversation and questions and comments that you have. That's uh, that's what that's what helps all of us get a better understanding of of what we're reading and and how we can ultimately bring it inside of us. So thank you again. Everybody have a great week and we'll uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Thanks very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you. Yes, thank you for wonderful sharing and very edifying words. God bless you all. Good night. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, Father. We can hear you great now. <laughs> <laughs>